All right, guys. So in round one, we are going to be looking at the great game debate. The great game debate is where we take a look at a game from the past that the community at large has held up as a top tier game. But do we agree with that? And I'll tell you that at least one person here does not agree with that with that uh, sentiment. And today that game we are going to be talking about is Concordia. It's a two to five player game. Takes about 100 minutes to play. Designer is Matt Gertz. And this is a game of some would say a rondelle. I would say a rondelle. You have a <laughs> you have cards in your hand. You're going to be playing these cards. These cards are going to be allowing you to do actions on the board. You're going to be building buildings. You're going to be generating resources from those buildings. And you're going to continually building up your hand and recruiting more cards. Once you play your card, you have to play a card to pick up all your cards. That's the rondelle part. And then you can play through your actions again. <laughs> all right. So there we go. That is a quick explanation of how you play concordia so to topher do you want to start it off sure first i want to correct you uh that was a wrong dell there's nothing rondell about what you were just talking <laughs> very about very good absolutely <laughs> correct uh concordia we'll agree to disagree <laughs> it is a really good game it's well designed the card play is phenomenal really well designed the map stuff i really don't care about a little more math than i want but Games are products. They're not just games. It has to be a whole package. And this game is not holding up whatsoever. The Ooh. production value, the art, it's actively pushing people away. I would love to see something like Lucky Duck is doing with Food Chain Magnet, where they <laughs> deluxify it, make it look good, make me want to play this game, want to introduce it to people. But right now, I'm happy to play it, but I am not recommending it to anyone. All right. Well, Topher comes out swinging right away. Topher, I, got, I got a quick question. Food chain magnet. Is that something you stick on your fridge? That's right. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's with the ketchup magnet. And you have to say it with your pinky. Magnate. Well. That's what he means. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, chain magnate. <laughs> All right. Well, Topher, we appreciate you being uh, concise and to the point. Uh, and obviously, you didn't get the memo that we just ramble. So <laughs> I'm all, all right, for it. It makes more time for me. <laughs> all right so let me ramble for a little bit here so concordia is a game by all metrics i should enjoy it's a euro game um it's thinky it has a lot of things going on there's a, a this this hand management hand building that's really exciting multi-purpose cards because sometimes the cards will be used uh for actions but they're also used for victory points at the end so you're always making these choices on when you should buy the cards for victory points mm -hmm. and when you should buy them um, to to use them in the future. But for whatever reason, this game just does not resonate with me. The best way to summarize how I feel about this game, it's a game that gives me constant FOMO. Not that I'm going to miss this game, but I'm going to miss the actions that I'm going to take in this game. Like I'm constantly looking at what everyone's doing on this game going, ooh, I want I want to build right there. Well, and then Chris builds there and I go, dang it, okay, I got I to gotta look at somebody else. Okay, well, I'm going to collect um, a bunch of coins from taking that one action that that you know gives you resources or gives you coins. Oh, but dang it, John just did that and took all the coins. So like I'm always like two steps behind in this game. I'm always feeling like I want what that last person just got. And that is not a very satisfying play experience for me. So in the end, I put this game in the same category for me personally, not for Chris, that I put Wingspan in. It's a game I will play. Ooh. It's a game that I will enjoy. But it's not a game I'm going to go looking and to play over and over again. There, there's so many games that have came out since Concordia. And like Topher says, you it fills the age. It feels a little dated. And I, I would just like to play almost any other game in this realm if I got to choose. So thanks for going short, Topher, so I could go long. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How much longer are you going to go there? <laughs> You're a politician, buddy. Anyway. Have you, have you ever um, just have you ever just thought about sat in the mirror and looking in the mirror and be like, I just suck at this game? Have you ever thought wow. that? Exactly. Exactly. Because like, wait, wait, just like, this hate, game? It's not gratifying because I'm really bad at it. Yeah, it could be <laughs> the, not the game's the fault. Hey, like no, Topher said, in, in it's Dan's a whole defense, package. Yeah, go ahead, Topher. In Dan's defense, you wind up having a plan done. Someone takes a turn. And then I'm redoing math over and over and over again, trying to figure out, okay, now I need to figure out this. I'm recalculating. There's so much recalculation in math that in theory, when you describe the game and play by the rules, there shouldn't be that much math in there, but you're always recalculating because people are taking your moves. 
Exactly. Mm. And, and I don't think it's that they're taking my moves that makes me upset. It's that everybody wants to do the same move. Like, that's what I feel like. Like, I feel like all the choices are what everybody wants to do. So, like, if I'm going left, everyone else is going left. There's not room to go right. It, it's uh, just. OK. It's, yeah, that's Good your say. You're done. I had my say. All right, so anyway, <laughs> you guys, if you've watched the show a lot, you might remember on a random task one time we had, hey, show us your the best trading in the Mediterranean game in your collection. And I came up with a war game that featured the Mediterranean Sea because I don't have any trading in the Mediterranean games because. People, when they're traded in the Mediterranean, I don't picture them having so much fun that they're saying, gosh, this should be entertainment. You know what I'm saying? This, what we're doing right now should be entertainment for somebody. <laughs> so I've always avoided trading the Mediterranean games. Because of that, I hadn't played Concordia. And then when I finally did play Concordia, I got to tell you, this is a good game. I don't understand what these jokers are saying because I did go <laughs> my own way and I was having a blast trying to figure out, oh, which is the best card I can play now? Do I have to pick up yet? Or I can do this, but if I if he does that, I better do this now because, you know, and there's so much cool things to think about, but then your turn is quick because you're just playing a card and doing what the card says. So, and doing whatever power's on the card. And then the uh, everything about it is so cool, but how you have the, the cards that you can get that give you actions in your hand, but they're also in-game scoring. Do I want that action? But I've got all these cities. Maybe I should get that one because it's going to, even though I don't want to use it really, it's going to give me a bunch of points in the end. So, and plus I can afford it. I can't afford the other one as well. So I just love all the different choices in it. And it's not a freaking Ronda. Everything that you have a choice isn't a rondelle. Okay. <laughs> Everything where you might do the same action twice isn't a rondelle. This is, a, a, Topher's the expert here. I would call this hand management action selection. That's what I would call this. And I'm starting to figure out that might be one of my favorite. Uh, I always thought uh, worker placement was maybe my favorite mechanic. This might be my favorite mechanic because I don't remember ever playing a game with this that I didn't like. So uh, that, I think my time is up, and so I'm going to go ahead and, and put it back to the four squares. But surprisingly, I like this game. So what that I'm is hearing, John, is you really like rondells. <laughs> <laughs> only my good friend, Rondell. That's the only one. That <laughs> so this is one of those games for me that I have played, and I don't know if I was just like, it was just a bad night, or I just had like just a bad vibe that night or something like that, but I played it, and I was just like, I don't know why people think this game is very good. <laughs> and right now, I just looked it up. It's 23rd on it BGG. Huge. 23! I couldn't believe it! Can't uh, argue that. So, I mean, it, you know, first, here soon, challengers will take it over, but... Um, That's true. Uh, but anyways, I couldn't believe it was 23. It blew my mind. So I was like, okay, again, this is what I was talking about. I feel this is another one of those games. That I need to give another couple plays to, and it's going to end up being like Great Western Trail or Brass for me, where I've just heard too many people like it that I respect that say it's a great game. And that's not even the 23. That just, I saw that and blew my mind. But I just personal people that I play with that I trust their opinions on, they just love this game. So I need to give another try. Again, when I played it, it just, it just kind of felt flat to me and stuff like that. But uh, uh, but I mean, you guys talking about it got me excited about it. What I'm just doing nothing but recalculating over and over <laughs> and over. That's all I want to do in games. I just want to do math for hours. So I'm that gets me excited right there. And the fact that John liked it, this is great. Now I can play with John. Uh, you know, the fact that it's Andy's one of his favorite games, that's kind of the reason I was actually maybe this game isn't a good game. No, no. <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, no, I, I again, it's just I've played it, but it's been a long time. Um, but, and I just didn't resonate with me, but it's again, after all these years, still number 23, that's pretty impressive. So, uh, I just need to try and I actually am starting to feel more, more, more confident it's going to be brass and great Western trail for me that eventually I just had to see the matrix. And once I did, uh, I loved it. Same, another one I just recently saw the matrix on and really enjoyed was viticulture. First couple oh, plays for me, I wasn't a huge fan on. I think I, the first one I played, I think, was actually before the Essential Edition. And that is actually just not great. And so I think it kind of soured me my second play. And then I played that third play recently. And I was like, wow, okay, this is great now. So, um, but yeah, so in Concordia, I, I'm excited. I want to play it. I'm kind of unsure. Uh, I'll make sure everyone knows what my thoughts were once I do play it again. Well, Chris, what I don't understand that, that Daniel was saying especially was how Oh, everybody's going to do this. No, not just that, but everybody's going <laughs> doing the same thing as if you can't control what you're doing. You have this right. whole hand of cards. Everybody else is playing A. I guess I have to play A. Everybody else playing A. I don't get right. that. That's, you can go, you can go on the land. You can go on the sea. You can get, you know, money. You can do whatever. There's all the different things you can do in your hand. Why are you doing the same thing everybody else is doing? That's what I don't get. Yeah, but it's not. It's because you need to plant your you need to plant your buildings first. 
So yeah. that's the first There's thing. There's a lot of different doing. places to so, do it on the rondelle. So everyone's doing it. But then you're like, the first player goes where they want is the best spot. The last player goes to what's left over. And then mm-hmm. you're like, okay, great. There's these cards out here that I really want, but I need to get my buildings down before I start getting cards. Oh, what? The first player already started to build buildings. That means he's going to get that card as well. It just, it feels like there's always this best move to do. And the person in front of you is always getting to do it. And you never do. I, I guess I didn't get that feel because it seemed to me like, while some of the buildings are worth more, like the the merchandise you get there is worth more, you always need bricks and they're worth the least, but you need them to build anything. So yeah, I went heavy on bricks and, and won the game one time, even though it, yeah, that's like the, the po boys way to go. But yeah. I and think maybe, there's different that, ways to go. Sorry. And while it fell flat for me, like maybe I didn't have remember having that problem like you did, Daniel, because I am so like, that's my my go to, right? If everyone's zigging, I'm going to zag, right? Like, yeah. oh, it's it seems like this is the it. thing. And I'm on third and third in position of the five or whatever. And the first two have already done this other thing. Like, maybe I'll still do that thing. But if I'm fourth and one through three did A, I'm definitely doing B. Like, like I know I got to do B at some point. I'm going to take first and B. And then I'm, what's the difference in fourth or fifth and A? Whatever. I'll take first and A and get fifth and B, right? So sometimes you just got to do that. So. Yeah. There's one more thing we have to talk about this game before we let it to rest. This game is listed as a five player game. <laughs> what nonsense is this? And of all the Euros I know that are played to five players, this is the one that is played at five players. For some reason, people keep on trying to play this at the highest player count. It's the worst possible experience. And it, it oh, wow. is leaving a sour taste in a lot of people's mouth just because of that. that a, a game that would be so good at three and four is uh, being squandered because people are putting squeezing that fifth player in. Maybe that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I I think Tom Vassell had this rule about always playing with one less person that's on the box. Like that should always be your like target number for a good game. Euros at three. That's the way to go. Euros at fun with final girl there. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. Well, that's our take on Concordia. What do you guys think? Does it hold up to the standards that we have today as as modern gamers? Or is this a timeless classic that will never age and will only get better like fine wine? So I hear. I don't drink wine. But let us know and subscribe. Leave leave comments down below. Like us. Do all that stuff. (laughs) And now we're ready for round two. Fight! Hey, thanks for watching a clip from Around the Board. It's a show that comes out every other Thursday where we discuss board games and board game topics. We're awarded points, and at the end, whoever wins gets to be on their soapbox and say whatever they want. So if you want to watch the full episode, find the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.